Armenia's prime minister is offering to recognize neighboring Azerbaijan's sovereignty over the disputed region of Nagorno-Karabakh. The two former Soviet republics have been locked in conflict over the area for decades, but a fragile ceasefire has now paved the way for peace talks. It's a territory that's been plagued by armed clashes for over 30 years, punctuated by two deadly conflicts. But the long dispute over Nagorno-Karabakh could be coming to an end. Armenia recognizes Azerbaijan's territory of 86,600 square kilometers. So long as Azerbaijan is willing to recognize the territorial integrity of Armenia's 29,800 square kilometers, Azerbaijan's territory includes Nagorno Karabakh. Pasinyan made the commitment on condition that Azerbaijan guarantees the safety of ethnic Armenians living there. The region was established by the Soviets after World War I. Predominantly populated by ethnic Armenians, it was nevertheless included within the Soviet Socialist Republic of Azerbaijan. Since the collapse of the Soviet Union, Armenia and Azerbaijan have both made claims to the territory. Some 7,000 soldiers were killed in the last war in 2020. The foreign ministers from both countries met in Moscow last week for trilateral talks with Russia's Sergei Lavrov. Leaders from both Armenia and Azerbaijan met EU Council Chief Charles Michel in Brussels 10 days ago. They are expected to meet Russian President Vladimir Putin on Thursday. He's still seen as a key broker by the post-Soviet neighbors. Well, for more on this, I'm joined now by Richard Giragosian. He's head of the Regional Studies Center, a foreign policy think tank in Yerevan. Thanks for being with us. Now, Nagorno-Karabakh has been fought over for decades. Why is Armenia apparently willing to give it up now? Well, this is a direct result of the devastating 44-day war back in 2020. And in this post-war environment, we see a sudden flurry of diplomatic engagement and activity. However, it's no longer Russia, but the West that is leading the diplomatic initiative. And Armenia's democratic change of government in 2018 also offers greater hope and optimism that we can reach a negotiated resolution. Now, Armenia is not offering to relinquish its claim to Nagorno-Karabakh without conditions. What exactly are those conditions? Well, that's a good question, Terry. In many ways, the Armenian government has actually failed to adequately articulate its position. What we do know, however, is that the Armenian government's policy has shifted to addressing or advocating for the rights and security of the Armenians of Nagorno-Karabakh, rather than self-determination or independence. This may be a face-saving way to forge a peace treaty with neighboring Azerbaijan, but the real concern and pressing challenge is Azerbaijan's maximalist position. And we still have to this day Azerbaijani military incursions and presence within Armenia proper having little to do with Nagorno-Karabakh. And there's a significant population of ethnic Armenians in Nagorno-Karabakh. How did they feel about this uh, proposed deal, Richard? Well, in many ways, the Armenians of Nagorno-Karabakh are pretty much feeling betrayed. In other words, looking much more to the Russians than to Armenia proper for security and safeguards. This is largely due, the, due to the presence of 2,000 Russian peacekeepers, who are the only guarantee for this fragile ceasefire, which also makes the outcome especially difficult as Russia remains distracted by its failed invasion of Ukraine. Richard, thank you very much. That was Richard Giragosian from the Regional Studies Center in Yerevan. Thank you, Terry.